And the last two before intermission, um, Andrew Welch and Ben Lovejoy. So my story is about loss, lessons, friendship, love, and joy. Um, my family lost my nephew this past November, Jordan, I had to bring his picture. He was a love, 22, champion wrestler, liked by all. I don't think I could have seen any more kids at a funeral in my life. Miss him dearly. When I found out about Jordan's loss, my sister-in-law called me and said, we'd really like you to talk at his funeral. I'm like, me? Talk at his funeral? What am I going to say? She said, I really want you to talk about the heroin addiction, because Jordan's going to have so many friends there, so many users there, and maybe if we could touch one kid's heart, it would probably be a good thing. OK, I said, I'll do it. And, that, and then I said, oh, what am I going to do? I got on the internet, looked around, read a lot, ended up calling the uh, person who heads up the Stratford County Rehab, Dover. Called her, she said, come on down, I want you to meet two kids. I said, sure, I'll come down. I'll learn a little, learn a lot maybe. Went down there, met not two, but three lovely young people. I was kind of astonished they were normal. They were like my kid. They were like all of our kids, everyday people. They weren't what I expected. I really liked them. We sat for probably an hour and a half and talked. They told me their stories. One of the girls named Ashley knew my nephew. Kind of shocking, but probably not, because it's a small community and you all know each other especially the addicts, they all know each other. So we talked, I learned a lot. I remember looking at Ashley and saying, what could your parents have done? You know, I have a kid her age, what would I have done? She looked at me, she said, tough love. My parents bailed me out. They got me a lawyer. They paid my cell phone bill, they gave me money. She said they shouldn't have done any of that. That's one of the lessons I want everyone to learn. You can't, you gotta tough love it. As hard as it is, you can't help these kids. Anyway, I befriended the three of them. They came to the funeral with me. It was really nice to have their support. Kind of figured that if anyone was there, the funeral needed to talk to somebody, had some questions, who better than people going through the, the rehab. They were a great asset to the service and the, and the reception after. And I remember after, we, it was really before we met at Dunkin' Donuts, and I sat down with them and I said, you know, I'm really hesitant on getting to know you guys, because statistically, you're not going to be here. I don't want to fall in love with you. I don't want to befriend you. I don't want to lose you. But these are really good people. So of course I did. Kept in touch, went out for lunch, have kept in touch even to this day. Uh, unfortunately, Miss Ashley lost her battle last month. She was a good kid from a good family. So the lesson here, parents, be tough on your kids. Love them, but be tough. Uh, so not only is this about loss and lessons, and love and joy. One of my new friends, ironically, your name is Ben Lovejoy. Come on down, Ben. <laughs> ben, I'm in long term recovery. Definitely didn't expect to have this many people. So it's like, I like the lighting because I can't really see it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I've heard a lot tonight, and uh, I can relate to a lot of the stories, a lot of the, uh, the children, the lost, uh, 
uh, the gentleman that just spoke, the, the battle with addiction. And uh, basically what, I mean, uh, I started out, I got strung out on prescription medication after an injury at work. But before that, I could see patterns of uh, like behaviors that I was experiencing. Like I went to a lot of, I attended a lot of colleges and universities, just never took classes, always went to a party. Um, <laughs> I've been around different countries, like a lot of different places, and uh, I didn't really get too bad until I crushed my hand to prescribed oxycodone, and uh, I was off to the races. Uh, I robbed, I stole, I went to jail, I've overdosed, I've flatlined, I've uh, tried suicide attempts many times. I've um, <coughs> took for granted like my family would be there every time I get every time I get out of every predicament that I was in. And uh, this last time I did a two and a half year prison sentence. And my grandmother passed away when I was in the C5 unit, special housing unit in the, in the Congo State Prison. And uh, I was stuck with me in that. Like, what am I going to do? I believe that was a motivator for me to get sober because I make amends to her daily on like living sobriety. Um, along the way, I found out that like alcohol and drugs aren't my problem. Like I'm my problem. If alcohol and drugs were my problem, like detox would have been the hottest thing that I did. And uh, even when you're removing <coughs> drugs and alcohol, like I still have a problem with me. And like it doesn't matter. Like somebody else had said. Like I drank and I used when I had a lot of money. When I drove a Lexus, I drank and I used when I when I didn't even have sneakers. So it's like my outside circumstances didn't matter. I still drank and did drugs until I I was introduced to uh, the solution for me, which was uh, AACA AJ in around this community. And I was introduced to another solution. I was using drugs and alcohol as my solution to the problem inside of me. And why wouldn't I drink and use drugs if it made me feel better? So until I found another solution, um, I was going to drink and use drugs. So today, like I have, uh, I just got nine months of sobriety on this past Tuesday. And the biggest thing is, is like, I want, I want a lot of people to know that like, ah, this is pretty controversial. Like I get it when I speak in meetings too, but like I come out of the I come out of the basic text of hey big book and like it says in there that I can recover from this. And like it's out there, like if I do the work, like I can recover. And today, like I no longer suffer with the obsession to drink and use drugs on a daily basis. I wake up and I can live life normally. I have what I have to do. Like I have to practice steps throughout the day. I have to make maintain contact with a sponsor. I have to come and do stuff like this, because if I don't like, it's not going to get out there. I'm not helping anybody. And uh, me sitting around doing nothing and not being connected, like, what I suffer from starts percolating. And uh, to relieve that, I start, I start drinking and using drugs again. I can't sit around and get comfortable and just, uh, like, take this stuff for granted. Like, I used to hide from it. I used to think, like, oh, yeah, like, I don't want these people going to AA. Right? They know I'm kicking in everybody's door. Why would I want to, why wouldn't I want to know that I'm going to like meetings and stuff to try and help myself? Like that was all the shame that I had. And uh, today, like I, I feel comfortable, well not right now, but. Uh, <laughs> but, I, but I do feel good carrying the message and I get pretty passionate about it. Um, so I mean, if there is anybody out there that, that like wants help, needs help, I'm sure there's other people here as well that you can contact or like talk to, but I'm definitely available to uh, try and help out as much as I can. I'm tra I've uh, actually traveled to New York. Like I go to New York, I speak. I got a, I got a speaking commitment coming up at St. Thomas. Um, like a lot of people are, are trying to get me to speak now. I don't know why, because I don't even really know what I say, but um, <laughs> it's uh, like, I didn't know what to say yet. And I saw these people coming in and I was like, uh, okay, so are the drug addicts here? Or just show, like families or something. But uh, yeah, so if there's a, uh, Anything anybody needs, anything that I can do, I try to go above and beyond and help people. And thank you all for coming, and thank you for everybody that spoke.